So good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for making it to day two. Uh, my name is Will Kent. I uh, am the Scholars and Scientists Program Manager at Wiki Education, and today I'll be talking to you about addressing content gaps at scale uh, and a way that this, this program en engages with these content gaps. Um, so let's let's get started. Um, I just wanted to find content gaps. I'm sure we all know it, but uh, just as a refresher to keep our brains nimble. Um, content gaps manifest, oh, this thing is in the way, manifests in many ways on, on Wikipedia. Sources can become outdated. Articles exist in only one or a few languages. Uh, they can be really heavy with jargon. Uh, they can be imprecise. Uh, they can be uh, outdated with phrasing, um, and that's very problematic. And sections or whole articles can not exist. So a lot of different ways to define gaps. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge that there are many different initiatives uh, happening already on Wikipedia uh, to address content gaps, and yet they still persist, and this is because they are difficult to deal with. But there are a lot of great people doing a lot of great things, um, and this is but one example. Um, so the Scholars and Scientists program is what, what I work on. Uh, what is it? How does it work? Uh, Ryan in this room started the program back in 2018, so so, so happy you're here. Uh, with a small set of professors. Uh, and since then, Wiki Education has been training subject area experts uh, in a virtual course. It can be six weeks, it can be eight weeks, it can be 10 weeks. We try to make it cater to whatever the situation is with the people taking the course, with our partners, with um, the area of focus. Um, Wiki Education creates training modules uh, for these courses that talk about how to edit, how to draft in sandboxes, how to work productively with the community. Um, me or uh, another set of instructors works with these uh, individuals to kind of usher them through the article writing process. They write articles uh, that are scoped specifically to a certain topic area. Um, and if anything flares up, uh, we've got Wikipedia experts on staff to kind of help buffer uh, and meet our conversations uh, that happen on the community with the idea uh, that whatever anyone writes should stick around because it, it adheres to guidelines and it makes sense. Uh, and Everyone loves it. Um, we also have some exercises to get people up and running. Um, but a very important thing to emphasize is experts are encouraged to edit in their area of expertise. And I know that that can be a thorny issue with conflict of interest or over promotion of their own sources. But I have to say, like 99% of the people I work with, this is not an issue. Um, people are just eager to share their expertise because they're passionate about it, their area of study, which I'm sure we can all relate to. We all have our passions and our interests, and we want to write about them. Uh, and this program tries to kind of uh, exploit that in a really nice way. Um, they also are encouraged to seek out and identify content gaps, which experts can do very well because they're very well versed in their topic areas. So they can see, oh, this source is missing. Um, this, this, is, this one's outdated. We don't use this phrase anymore. Uh, whereas other people like me, because I'm not an expert in that much, um, might not know about the phrase and might not know about the sources. So it, it should be like an easier lift for, for these participants. And sometimes we do help. We have tools to identify um, lower quality articles, articles that should exist but don't, articles that exist in other languages of Wikipedia but not in English, for example. Uh, so that's how the program works. Um, so I also want to emphasize whether it's a small edit, something around phrasing, or a big edit, like a whole new article or a, a set of articles, uh, this program is able to uh, focus like a laser on specific topic areas. And I'll give you some case studies in just a little bit. Um, so since the program got started, it's grown, which is very exciting. Uh, and now we work with three guest instructors. I'm going to shout out Carter right here, who is one of our guest instructors. Um, uh, we run 20 to 30 courses a year, uh, and we also developed a Wikidata program that follows the same kind of structure, so teaching people how to edit Wikidata in a productive way that makes sense with the community, that adheres to best practices, um, which is a completely different set of tools and recommendations than Wikipedia, but they both work really well together. Uh, and courses are small, um, just 10 to 20 people. Sometimes we've worked with slightly larger courses, sometimes slightly smaller, um, but the idea is that we want the personal touch in these courses. We don't want uh, people to be a number and to kind of flip through. Um, or to go with questions unanswered. Um, we really want them to have a positive editing experience. Uh, and we find that smaller courses are a great way to achieve that. So where do these people come from? Uh, I want to talk a little bit about partnerships and recruiting because this is actually like maybe the most resource intensive element of this program and also 
has the biggest payoff in terms of addressing content gaps. Um, so it's more than just that, it's, it's, it's the people. So uh, the reason why I attribute a lot of success to this program um, is because we're able to identify and partner with experts in different fields. Um, it takes time to learn how to edit Wikipedia. So we have to have some institutional support usually, or at least people who are self-selecting uh, to participate in this program to, to address uh, these content gaps, to actually like learn how to edit. Because I, I wanna say like at least 90% of, of participants are new to editing or have done like maybe an edit or two. They're not, they're not uh, full Wikipedians yet. They need to kind of be activated and pushed and supported. Um, so training is essential for Edististic. Uh, we have to explain you know, COI um, and provide support. And again, it's not, it doesn't really come up uh, in terms of their edits, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but the training element, definitely, there, there's a lot of support that's required there. People manage to ask about every single kind of question that exists. Uh, Carter's laughing. <laughs> um, and they, they range from like very simple things uh, that you can find usually on Wikipedia. It's just like some very arcane things that require a lot of deep diving into talk pages and uh, uh, like requ requests for comment pages. Um, and I also think that learning in a cohort makes it more manageable if, if you can share the trauma together and you can grow together. So that's a joke. Uh, people people <laughs> really enjoy learning together. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about um, some case studies and I'll, I'll return to partnerships. Um, so some courses we've run uh, thematically uh, include courses about the disability community, um, civics, the 2024 election, uh, Latinx communities. We have a lot of campaign finance courses that we've been running, which is about how to fund or climate change mitigation projects. It's not about funding the climate to get worse. Um, LGBTQIA plus biographies, women's health, open education resources, and there's so many more. Um, but this is just scratching the surface of some of the gaps that we have uh, focused these courses on. Um, and we've achieved this through some partnerships. Um, so the WIF Foundation is a disability advocacy group. Uh, they identified uh, participants for our course, connected us to a, a, like a host of nonprofits that exist uh, with people who could potentially take these courses. We conducted outreach and were able to accept a lot of um, their recommendations uh, into the course. Um, the American Physical Society, we've run eight courses with them to date. Uh, they feed us so many physicists, which is outstanding. Uh, and then we train them how to edit Wikipedia, which is which is fun. Um, American Historical Association, Association, we just started a partnership with them, Midwestern Political Science Association, the Smithsonian Biodiversity Heritage Library, among uh, many others. Uh, and it would be great to work with every single association and organization institution that exists, um, but we have a smaller staff. Uh, and so that's really difficult. And it's also, um, you have to find organizations for whom this makes sense. Not every single organization is eager, eager to jump on board and send their staff to learn about Wikipedia or their members to learn about Wikipedia. But since we frame this as more of a professional development course, it makes sense for a lot of associations. I think I saw a hand go up. Who is we? Wiki Education. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's in the, the bottom corner. It's easy to miss. Um, so let's talk about impact uh, and actual uh, metrics when it comes to dealing with these content gaps. Um, so I've got this first slide titled Quantity, but not Quality. Um, so for Wikipedia, we've run over 100 programs now. We've worked with almost 1,500 editors. Uh, we've added almost 2 million words um, and 20,000 plus references. Uh, so these numbers are huge and it's hard to, to couch them and contextualize them. Um, but the 750 million views since 2018 is, is really mind boggling to me. And also the like 1000 plus comments uploads. Um, just for this, this one, again, very small laser like focused program. And I, I also want to um, clarify that Every single edit isn't addressing a content gap, but um, most of them are because of the way that we've themed our courses and because um, we train uh, instructors and I, the way I teach is to focus on these things that don't exist on Wikipedia. Uh, we define content gaps. We talk about how they exist and systematic bias. This is all baked into the curriculum. Um, so it's not like people are, are just wandering into things and editing willy nilly, but some people edit what they want and they are popular articles that already do exist. So we don't stop them. Um, but I do want to emphasize that the, the numbers are not all content gap related. Um, so this one is about quality, not quantity. This just came up this summer. Um, 
we were running a series of election courses. It's about the Comstock laws in the United States, uh, which um, they're trying to use to prevent sending birth control through the mail, uh, even though the Comstock laws were originally anti-obscenity uh, laws. And really quickly, this, this lead section, this is from earlier this summer, uh, is, is very jargon filled. It kind of reads like the law. Um, there's a lot of references of sections of, of federal acts, um, subsections, um, a lot of judge mentions, uh, and it's easy to get lost uh, in, in this definition, this lead section of the Comstock uh, laws. And after um, somebody in one of our courses worked really hard on the lead and worked with a Wikipedian who's a very like kind of uh, gatekeep gatekeeping of this uh, article, was able to update it to this. Um, and this is with the work of that Wikipedia, and I wanna um, give give credit to that too. Um, but the really important line is right here, because this is what the whole collection is about, is about people. Um, and that was missing until someone in our course added it. Um, and it is just a sentence, but that sentence is huge. Uh, anyone who like wanders into this page is gonna like be looking for that sentence because that's what ties it to the, the current conversation about this act that otherwise no one has cared about uh, you know, since for decades. Um, so this is just one instance of a really tiny change that has a very profound impact on the article and what follows and, and what people take away from the article. So I'm very proud of this one change. Um, and these small changes do add up. Um, so there's reason to celebrate. Um, so an expert, oh yeah, question. Do you have maybe some data that people actually interpret the article differently based on that one sentence? I feel like what I didn't see it, you know? Uh, yeah, page views. Uh, it, the page views have spiked uh, because it's come up in the news. But like, I, you know, I, I haven't interviewed people to be like, do you feel differently about this article? But people are checking it for this reason. It's not like they want to know about the mail. Or like obscenity in, in like over, over post. Uh, okay, um, so more about partners and targeted outreach. Um, none of this amazing work would be possible without finding the right people for each course. I think it's very important to have people representing these communities and these topic areas actually writing the articles themselves. That gives a sense of ownership. That gives a sense of wanting to engage at a deeper level of investing. Retention is an issue. It's always an issue with new editors. But the ones who do stick around, they, they, they find this comfort and this match because they're excited, because they can relate to it. Um, and I think that's that's significant. Um, so Wiki Education partners with associations, institutions, and individuals to help fill these courses. This is a very laborious process because we want to make sure that they know what they're getting themselves into. We want to be able to deliver um, courses to them uh, that meet their schedule, that meet the, like, the pace and the timing of, of what, they, what their demands are. Um, and we also have a very talented staff. It's very small, um, but you know, like I, I work with um, my director for it does a ton of marketing and that takes a long time to find, find these people. And it's also very confusing what Wiki Education does um, to train people to edit Wikipedia. Um, it's, it seems straightforward to us because we're all very intimately involved with, with the community. Um, but for academics, it takes a minute for that to sink in. So it's often like a therapy session to say like, well, you want to share your research with the world, right? Well, did you think of Wikipedia? Um, did you ever try editing? Like the, it's, it's just takes some time to, to develop these, these relationships. Um, and support uh, is also tricky. The, you know, um, these things cost money. Uh, and so we, we do seek out grants um, uh, to, to help run these courses. Uh, but they're, it's it's just to to run the courses. There's no there's like no paid editing or anything like that. Um. So for example, the the With Foundation uh gave us uh, a don a donation to to help facilitate these courses, um and helped us recruit participants, which was fantastic because it was people with lived disability experience participating in the courses to write articles uh in in that area. Um. And I think that that was very significant, and they loved the course, which uh made me super happy. Um. So a little more detail about that. Um, this fund, the WIT Foundation promotes the establishment of comprehensive health care for adults with developmental disabilities. I talked a little bit about this yesterday, so if you're in my session, I apologize for uh, doubling, but it's a, a good story that bears repeating. Um, and so the partnership that, that we forged with them um, was fruitful for both of us because we could explain what we do to others. They could um, coach us in, in reaching out to these nonprofits, these support groups. Um, 
host meetings, make additional connections, and be an active resource if either party had questions. So they acted kind of as like an information hub, which I thought was really great. And this resulted in four classes and one workshop. The workshop was kind of like an edit-a-thon. Uh, we worked with a lot of physicians, uh, and in my experience in running these courses, physicians are notoriously difficult to pin down because they have real emergencies that come up all the time, and they should tend to those. But I also want them to edit Wikipedia. And so scheduling was just like a very uh, noticeable challenge for these kinds of courses, and it turned out like the edit-a-thon model worked better than the multi-week courses did. So that's why we did that, and that's an example of like how the curriculum is flexible and how catering to different communities with different needs demands this. Uh, and I think that's important to emphasize. Uh, and so this is this is a, an actual example from um, one of the articles or one of the contributions that a participant worked on for Down syndrome. Um, this whole section about ocular findings was absent from the article. As you can see, it's multiple paragraphs with multiple citations. Um, and this is one of those things where you would have just expected to be present in the article already. And it, yet it wasn't. Um, and it was really clear to this, this particular participant uh, that this had to exist. And um, he, he like lives, has lived with somebody with uh, Down syndrome for his whole life. And so he saw this and immediately was like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start work on it, threw it in a sandbox. We edited it together and then he posted it live. And now it's been on that page. Um, and it resulted in almost 10,000 words added, 100 new sources, over a million views. Uh, huge numbers that are very exciting um, for this community and for the world, which I think is great. And there's a little link. Uh, I can share this later. You can access it on the, the conference page uh, for uh, a blog post that goes into a little bit more detail about this community and um, what they've done. Uh, and then there's this whole Wikidata like branch of the program, which is similar but different. And I do want to spend some time on this because I think Wikidata uh, is, like lives in the shadows of Wikipedia pretty frequently. Um, and we do target content gaps with, with Wikidata too. Um, this is just like a dashboard statistic for all the Wikidata courses we've run, which is just under 50. Uh, we've worked with over 500 uh, prof metadata professionals, museum professionals, interested people, people who thought they were taking a Wikipedia course, but it ended up being a Wikidata course. Um, <laughs> And it's the, the numbers are also very staggering for this, just like the number of items that they've created, the number of edits they've made. Um, and the other thing is working with these museum professionals, there's already a, a, an understanding of content gaps because they're trying, they want, like the mission is to share their data more broadly. Um, and by virtue of getting it on Wikidata, that encourages Wikipedia articles to be written, that encourages more reliable sources from these institutions to be used across wikis. Um, and I think that that is very inspiring. I really like running these courses for that reason. Um, also, by virtue of Wikidata being Wikidata, you can make batch edits, uh, which are like you know, multi-thousands of edits in one click. Uh, and that can improve vast swaths of Wikidata very, very quickly. So these courses, are it's like really hard to quantify the impact because the numbers are so varied. Um, sometimes we create 100 items. Sometimes it's 5,000 items. And that's just like dependent on the museums or the libraries that we're working with. Um, but either way, it's just like things that never existed before all of a sudden exist. Um, and this is this has like a, a, a trickle down effect into Wikipedia um, because projects like Women in Red rely on Wikidata queries, uh, uh, Listeria tables, which are derived from Wikidata queries to generate lists of articles that don't yet don't yet exist in English Wikipedia, but do in other languages. Um, so you can use that same formula, but point it toward anything in Wikidata and generate lists of articles that should and could exist on English Wikipedia, but don't. Um, and so training people how to do that is an element of these, these courses. Um, and I think that that's kind of like an undervalued um, aspect of it is like the maintenance of Wikipedia through Wikidata is very significant. Using queries to reveal where gaps exist. Um, and then very complicated high level edits, like creating new properties, you know, contributing to the ontology of Wikidata, data modeling, how do we describe the things that we're looking at? Resolving property constraints, which can be very specific and thorny, happen regularly as part of these courses. So we're training people how to how to um, exist and contribute in the community on a very high level very quickly, uh, which is always exciting. Um, and I also have to acknowledge that people know how to do this already, and they just come to the course, and then we supercharge them and point to like specific areas where they can actually kind of show off and do their thing, which I love. Um, so this isn't to say that we've cracked the code with content gaps. This is just one initiative that we're you know chipping away at them with. So there's some some challenges. I just want to you know 
remind ourselves that this is a really, really small program. Um, and even though we've worked with like 1,500 people that you know from other programs, you know from the community that 1,500 people is nothing. It's a drop in the bucket, but it's still new people. It's still exciting. Um, we spend a lot on resources. Um, uh, this is my full-time job. Um, and I, my team is like three or four other people and three guest instructors. Um, that's not huge. Uh, and recruiting and partnership and teaching, uh, it just takes time. Running these courses takes time. Yeah, question. Yeah, how many of those It's a complicated question um, because some do it for like a year and then stop. Some start up again. Um, so I don't have retention data, um, but I can tell you that people who people who take the course have never edited before and end up editing at least once. So that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, retention is complicated, but I'm glad you brought that up. Um, easier topics already exist. We must and will work harder to add more. Um, so things that already exist already exist because they've been added. Um, and it just takes more effort to identify the things that haven't been added yet. So that just takes more resources and time. Staff is small and language limited. It would be wonderful to offer this program in multiple languages, but our expertise is in English currently. Um, and competing interests keep experts from taking the course. This is like the number one hurdle to having people participate is they have like other job responsibilities, which makes sense. But relegating this work to a volunteer capacity um, for them, it, it's always the first thing to go. Like if a meeting comes up or if they have to go to a conference or, you know, anything. Um, so that's that's one way that um, this program is, is challenged. Um, and no matter how good our recruitment is, we will, Wiki Education, me, everyone working on this, will continue to miss groups and topics. Um, I, I just think it's impossible for us to like hit every single group that exists and, and like be fully inclusive, which is a problem. And I just want to you know admit to that and say that out loud because it, it's something that we always have to work on. Um, but looking ahead, it's not so bleak. There are things that we can do. Um, I would love to expand this program, work with more people, more partners, uh, develop more tools to identify more content gaps. This is in the works right now, but there's always more that we could be doing. Um, work with populations we've never worked with. Uh, more cross wiki work, I think, is very helpful and takes a special bird uh, to kind of go between the projects, but they exist, which is exciting. Um, implement the program in different languages uh, and expand the curriculum to cover more specific concepts, processes, and practices on Wiki and in research, and then uniting all of this to address content gaps. So these are things that I'm, I'm working on currently um, and building more community. So hiring more guest instructors, um, expanding the staff. If I, if I had an unlimited budget, that's what I would do first, um, but I don't. So this is, this is where we're at. And I think that's my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. I will happily take questions. Thanks everybody. Geographically, where are you focused? The United States. More specific. Across the United States. It's all over. Everywhere. Yeah. And Canada. and Canada. But it's mostly the United States. Canada. We also get a few from Mexico and a few like filter in from Europe every now and again, but it's mostly the United States. Great question. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't support French, um, but we would love to. But you know, we have done it. Sometimes we have talked with instructors who speak first language of English. Mm -hmm. So we negotiated with you guys to be able to accept that because we had subject matter and language experts. The same thing we tried with uh, Montreal, but we had the help of uh, somebody coming from you know, Canada mm -hmm. to help with the language. So, I mean, I understand the restriction because you guys are just a small group. Yeah, yeah. And about retention, I just want to add, you know, once I learned a long time ago that the focus was to retain instructors more than students, students, many things going on. And I think you guys do a great job doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and a, a note on language is that we don't prevent people from editing in different languages. It's just we can't support them with our expertise and our knowledge of the different language uh, guidelines of, of other language versions of Wikipedia. But if people want to edit in any language, I say, yes, please do it. I just can't, you know, I can't read for tone. I can't. Yeah. yeah I, I know. I, I want to ask Leanna if she feels success because you guys are <laughs> more, <laughs> by more than you. 
um, a lot, but I would encourage, like in this case, if they can find a Wikipedia expert in that language, mm -hmm. there would be no, be no reason not to do that. Yep. Yeah, and currently we're we're partnering with with Equis, who I think are here. Maybe not in this room, but they're at the conference, and we're working on translating our modules into Spanish for the first time, and kind of finding Spanish language instructors. So it's it's happening. It's just you know, there's over three hundred languages. We want to do them all. We can't do them all. Yeah, it's, it's just like, yeah. It's like the sounds like super cool. Like I'm really excited. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of thing. Is there any way people can like volunteer or help out with this? Like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, do I include my email? I don't. I should have added it, but it's just you can find it on the conference website. Well, at wikiedu.org. Get in touch with me, and we can we can talk about either like taking a class and like supporting people in the class, or like I don't know, intern. I don't know. We'll 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 discuss it. But the, yeah, the more hands, the better. I think, or even on wiki, it's really helpful if you find people in the classes. Um, if, if that's an appropriate way to support. I think there's another hand. Oh. Yeah, I have one. How do you find your emails? How do we find them? Oh, yeah. So um, we usually select a theme. So like with the disability theme, um, there's a disability wiki project. We always evaluate or we always check out those those tables to see like what the class of the articles are. And we kind of look at importance. Um, but really, it's it's the participants because they know they just like I, I one of our like exercises is to like look at articles in that topic area and like notice what's missing and we'll, we have a conversation about it. So it's very organic. Um, but we can also like crunch numbers, generate lists, use pet scan, a bunch of the tools that are available to us um, if people don't want to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. I represent tangentially rainfall and system engineering. No okay. Matter, so. It's part of a professional society that's not popular. Yeah. But like I've got our own wiki, but this sounds very similar to what we try to do with our experts. Yeah, yeah. That's... I mean, they're not wiki people, right? And yeah. so we get them to try to figure out, okay, you've written books about this stuff. How can I get it down to what we mean for a consumable format? For sure, yeah. Yeah, we lean really hard on, on the great work of wiki projects to, to help us, but it's also what, what people see because they know. Cool. Yeah. Great question. Yes, yeah. So um, I am a native Korean speaker, uh -huh. and um, although I had a book here on Wikipedia, I sometimes um, go to the Korean Wikipedia and see what's going on there. And uh, I've had the impression that there's this, there's a vastly different environment in Wikipedia and other languages, and the programs that are programs in Wikipedia are organized independently by uh, the Wikipedia in that language and not by the English uh, Wikimedia Foundation. Um, so has the Wikimedia Foundation like kept in close touch with all those other Wikipedia? So all, as I, as I understand it, all language versions of Wikipedia are governed by themselves and independently of each other. So no. And to clarify, you are not technically Wikimedia. I am not Wikimedia Foundation. Right. I work for Wiki Education. They're all named very similarly, but <laughs> that's to confuse. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for sharing. Of um, course. It's great to be on with you. Now we can kind of position to the Wikimedia yeah. Foundation. So like, now we can have like conversations on all the UK and content that. Um, um, we're doing a part of the session backing and we'll seem to uh, hear from you like which tools have been useful for you to like um you know identify the problem gaps so that mm -hmm. like yeah so it's like content transition to where we are like working to help people find topics uh it is communities find topics easily yeah but there are tools which have been helpful for you to identify the content gaps themselves i mean the the number one biggest tool are the participants because they know because they're experts and they just look at wikipedia and they they go to their articles and they see what's good and what's not when they don't know that, I, I use PetScan a lot. Um, I rely on like categories and um, the content assessment tables. Yeah. But they're not taking for tools that don't help you with that. No, and the, again, this is because the scale of the program is so specific, and we're just like targeting really precise things. Um, Speaking yeah. about the scalability of the program, yeah. how can how do you think you can scale it? I mean, you said okay, give more money. Yeah. It doesn't seem that scalable. Like you have one teacher get paid some money to teach five people uh, 
I mean, in the past year, we've doubled the number of courses we're able to run, um, which I hope is sustainable. And I don't know if we'll double it every single year, um, but that has a direct correlation to funding. Um, we're able to pay people for their work. Um, and this kind of echoes the, the talk that you gave yesterday, where um, this is hard work that people do and they, they should be compensated for it. And in teaching, it's not, we're not, you know, telling people what articles they can edit, we're teaching them how to edit. Um, the teachers, the people editing are not they're not being paid. Yes. So, okay. so it's just offering more opportunities, like more, it'd be great if we could like have a, a website where there's like 20 courses running at once. Yeah. And it's like, I'm interested in this and this and this. And, oh yeah, of course on Wednesday and Thursday, I'm free on Thursdays, I'll take this. But right now it's like, we have one course, it's on Mondays. Okay. It's about this, you know? I think we'd be able to like hit a lot more people if they were just- And then like videos of modules on that? There's, um, like as part of the training or like are the courses recorded? In general, like is there a way I could take some videos instead of necessarily having a weekly course where we need live? Yeah. Why could I not just go to a YouTube channel? You can. That those exist? Oh yeah, they, there's a ton of those on YouTube. It's just that they're not effective. They're not as effective. They're effective for some people, but we find that people want questions answered live. They really like being in a cohort. They like talking through things together. Um, so that's why we do the synchronous thing. Ryan. So um, I'll ask the question, knowing intimately how difficult it is to get people to stick around at the events. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a different version of that and see if you have done any comparisons between the likelihood that scholars or that you know, professors um, stick around after these courses versus how often students stick around after their courses, knowing that this is not one of the main goals of this program. Yeah, it's I, it's not a, a ton, um, but like I don't know. Uh, people take multiple courses, and the curriculum doesn't change. It's an introductory curriculum, uh, so they take it because they like the work, they like the camaraderie, um, and that's that's a consistent thread throughout the courses. There's always like a couple people, but it's on the scale of like ten to twenty, you know, during a year. Um, Ian, we're going to be more than students. Right? Yeah. Students. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just to add something in there, I think that it's, I mean, student attention is incredibly low. I think the people who take these courses are, and stick around for a while are often people who try to edit the TV on their own form. And then these people who, you know, made a few edits and run into problems and did reverse and so on. I think those people. Are much more likely to stick around than when we go and recruit the uh, um you know people from a specific area like the SSP or so they're much less likely because they just came to this one place. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And what I found in the classes I've taught, there's usually some people who had tried to edit in the past and have bad experience. And so being able to help them sort of unpack that, understand the community better, understand the expectations was helpful in sort of recharging their interests. There have also been a lot of people who are teachers at various uh, colleges, universities, who have been interested in the idea of incorporating it into their classwork. And this really gets them jumped up. I don't know how many actually convert over at Greenside. Yeah. But, um, and, and we have, in one of the classes I recently did, there was a teacher who hadn't done this class, but she did use Wikipedia in some of her classes. And some of the experiences she had engaging with the community as part of this class gave her some new insights into you know, what some of her students have experienced. And seeing it from that side, she said it really helped her better understand how to how to work it and use it and bring it into the classroom. That that is a great point. Thank you for bringing that up, Carter. Yeah. How much of the cost per class to run? Like, if I want to run one of these classes, I should approach my professional organization and say, we need X. It's at least like we we quoted at like ten thousand for for staff time and resources. And like, these are all free to participate in. We don't charge for these. We get we seek the funding through grants, through foundational support. We get money from the Wikimedia Foundation. That's how we're able to to run these. But we still have staff to pay, and so that's kind of like the the number that we give. Do grants? Do we do grants? No, I mean, 
I mean, primarily funded through grants. Yes. But there is a foundation. Uh, it, well, the foundation gives us money, and then several other foundations give us money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, that Wikipedia tries to help or somehow helps with the different languages of the association, but I don't quite understand how that happens. Yeah. So, uh, all any other Wikimedia project is linked to a singular Wikidata item. Anytime something exists across like Commons, Wikidata, like Wikivoyage. Um, all of those links are gathered on a Wikidata item. So even if the Wikipedia in French, when they will write about streams, it's somehow linked to the Wikipedia. So like the, the link to the French Wikipedia article about trees is linked on the Wikidata item for trees. But like content from that Wikipedia page doesn't necessarily filter into the Wikidata item. It's just the link to the French language version of Wikipedia. But Part of the promise of Wikidata is you'd be able to turn on some features to uh, call the data from Wikidata someday into any article that you want across all language versions of Wikipedia. So like populations of countries change, instead of updating 300 language versions of Wikipedia, you could say, give me the new value for population from the Wikidata item. Yeah, because in some cases there is, can be a tree, a physical tree, yeah. or can be a cosmetic or tree for your city. So, right, if I understand correctly then, Data is getting information from the language, but not sending back. So somebody might be writing about three the cosmetic and not and using the wrong Wikidata. No, empty. that doesn't really happen. No, okay. no, it does help with disambiguation too, um, because every every Wikipedia page has a Wikidata item. Yeah, uh, and all, all languages. Okay. Yep, all languages. There are some other hands. But yeah. Yeah. Um, did you guys uh, run the Wikipedia education program on the Wikipedia? Is it the same thing or is it different than this page with instructions? In the education program on that's different. That's different. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the names are so similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they do use, I think, they do suggest using the tools that we have. Yes. Yeah, we, we develop a lot of the tools. The dashboard comes from Wiki Education. So whether it's the projects and events dashboard or the wiki education dashboard proper that's all wiki education but yeah then there's the education program which is different okay. sorry it's confusing any other questions i will stick around if you do have more questions thank you so much for attending have a great rest of your conference this is great